Hi, it's Tim from Oracle Base. That's cool. In this video, we'll give a demonstration of simple Oracle Document Access, or SODA, for REST. This makes the Oracle database act like a JSON document store. This has been a feature of Oracle REST data services for a long time, but the recent announcement of the autonomous JSON database has increased the interest in this feature. We'll assume you already have a suitable database with an ORDS installation. There are links in the description to explain how to do that, as well as a link to an ORDS YouTube playlist. We connect to a privileged user and create a test user called SODA user. We grant it create session and create table privileges. We also grant it the SODA app role. We connect to the test user. We enable ORDS for this schema using the enable schema procedure in the ORDS package. We've used a URL mapping or schema alias that matches the username. We wouldn't normally do this, preferring to give a friendly alias. We'll see this schema alias in the URLs we use. We disable authentication for these demos using this call. This is a bad idea in a real system, but it makes the setup for this demo easier. The linked article explains more about authentication. We're now ready to start. Documents are grouped into collections. It probably makes sense to keep different types of documents in separate collections, but you could keep a variety of different document types in a single collection if you wanted to. First we'll create a new collection. We interact with Soda for REST using this base URL. It's made up of the base ORDS URL, the schema alias, followed by Soda latest. We'll do all the tests using curl, but you could use a REST client. We use the minus I flag to show the header information for some of these tests. The minus X flag allows us to indicate the HTTP method. In this case, we use the put method. Then we have the SODA URL with the name of the collection we want to create on the end. The name is case sensitive. This call returns a 200 OK message. On the database we can see a table has been created for the collection. Notice the name is quoted as it's case sensitive. This table is essentially a key value table. The ID is the key and the value is the JSON document column with the JSON stored as a blob. From 20C onward this would likely use the new JSON data type. We list the available collections using the get method with the base soda URL. The output is minified and hard to read, so we've used this Python utility to pretty print it for these demos. The resulting JSON document contains an array of items, one item describing each collection. This includes a link to the collection. We drop a collection using the delete method, and the URL contains the name of the collection to drop. This gives us a 200 OK response. This drops the database table that supports the collection. The rest of the examples require the collection, so we'll recreate it. We have a file called newdoc1.json containing this JSON document. We create a new document from the file using a POST call. We send the data as a raw payload, setting the content type header to application JSON. We use the collection URL to indicate which collection to create the document in. The call returns the details of the new document, including the key. Let's add a new document with a different internal structure. We have a file called newdoc2.json containing this document. Notice it has a different internal structure to the first document. We load it in the same way and it works with no errors. Remember, the document store lets you load any valid JSON document into the store regardless of internal structure. We can bulk load multiple separate documents by presenting them as an array. We have a file called newdoc3.json 
containing these JSON documents in an array. We load it in a similar way. Notice the addition of the action parameter in the URL. This tells ORDS to load each array item as a separate document. The returning document shows two items have been loaded. We return all documents in a collection using the get method along with the collection URL. The output includes an items array containing all the documents and their metadata. We can see if the output is paged and there are links describing available methods. We can return a single document by adding a key onto the collection URL. We can return documents using a query based on a matching pattern in a JSON fragment. This uses the post method. Here we have a JSON fragment in line so quotes are escaped. We add the action parameter to the collection URL to indicate this is a query. This returns any documents that match the pattern in the fragment, in this case a single document. We can update existing documents. We have a file called updatedoc.json containing this JSON document. To perform the update we use a put method passing the data as a raw payload. We set the content type header to application JSON. We identify the document to be updated by adding the key to the collection URL. We get back a 200 OK response. We delete a document using the delete method, adding the document key to the collection URL. We get back a 200 OK response. We can also delete based on a pattern similar to the query we saw before. In this case we delete all documents. We use the post method providing a pattern that matches everything. We have the content type header set to application JSON. We add the action parameter to the collection URL to indicate this is a delete. We get back a 200 OK response as well as an indication of how many rows were deleted. We can truncate the underlying table in a similar way to the previous example. This time we use truncate for the action parameter. We get back a 200 OK response. We've only scratched the surface but this should give you an idea of how to use soda for rest to interact with the document store. Thanks for watching. As always there are links to articles containing lots more information about this subject in the description box below.